Hey guys, how's it going? It's our week 17 on DraftKings, the wildest week of any NFL week. And that's saying something, considering that in 2020, National F Football League DFS has essentially been what NBA DFS had been for previous years. This is the one year. Now, granted, we do get a 90-minute reprise every single week where we get to find out who's active and who's inactive in NFL. But like we've seen more craziness this year in terms of players who are in and out players doing the hokey pokey with COVID they're out all week, but then all of a sudden they clear on Sunday morning and they're able to play other players who are teams who miss their entire room, like the quarterback room for Denver or the wide receiver room for Cleveland. And it's created this vacuum of value on an every a volume on an every single week basis. And now we have week 17 where certain teams are playing for seeding, certain teams are playing to even make the playoffs, certain teams are playing for home field advantage. We have one of the teams that is locked up on number one seed and, and may sit all of their, should sit all of their starters. And most of it is up for grabs on the main slate. Only one night game this week, no Thursday night football, no Monday night football. There's one Sunday night game uh, with Washington controlling their own destiny. So they flex that game out to have uh, NBC have a Sunday night game, but a 15 game monstrous main slate with a whole bunch of them being in the afternoon so we actually get a cool split slate or if you're playing early only or if you're playing afternoon only uh or evening only it gives you a great way to play this week of football it's going to be an insane week they actually have a millionaire maker on this slate they usually drop week 17 uh the the number one prize pool to like a smaller like a 250, 500K for first place, not a million to first. So DraftKings still has a millionaire maker on the slate. Absolute insanity. And I would probably guess that this entire first look is going to be obsolete by the time the main slate rolls around. But we're going to take a look at doing things the way that we want to because a ton of volume or volume and value will open up before Sunday because we're going to find out who's playing and who's not. Throughout the week, we're going to find out who has certain contract incentives uh, to reach certain statistical milestones or whether they do not. Uh... So that's going to affect week 17 and week 17 is to me the most exciting week of regular season NFL every single year outside of week one, uh, just because of all the unknowns and everything else that pops up and happy new year to all of you guys. I hope that, uh, 2021 is going to treat you better than 2020 has tweet tweeted, has treated all of us. So thank you guys for the continued support all year on Twitch, on all my other social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, everything as well. Uh, as here on YouTube with all the love that you guys have shown throughout the year. Uh, all the best. Have a safe and happy new year. And let's hope for a better 2021. So drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit that notifications bell. And if you wanted to become a channel member, you can. That join button's there if you want to take that next step. All of you, though, need to jump over into Discord, especially with NBA going the way that it is now. There'll be somebody for you to talk about daily fantasy with or sports betting or food or pets or anything else uh, with the great community that we've built over on Discord. There are members only channels for those Twitch subscribers and channel members on YouTube. And with NBA going, like I said, it's some place where you can have a great community of people to talk about the coming slates with every single day because uh, DFS can be extremely isolating. So without any further ado, let's take a look at this insane week 17 slate. And let's start with the quarterbacks. You can see we have 15 games on the slate, which is all already that's insane, right? Most slates are like 12, 13 games, even before bye weeks because of the Monday night game. Uh, the Thursday night game, the Sunday night game, all these games in the main slate and so much value and volume is going to pop up with like Patrick Mahomes probably going to sit this game out. I would assume is that's a thing that coach Reed tends to do. <sighs> Reed said there's a good chance Chad Henney starts Sunday's game. So like that's going to erase the, the Vegas thinks that they're going to sit him because again, totals at like 45 for this game. We do have teams that are playing for stuff, teams that are playing for seeding, teams that are playing for uh, just a berth in the playoffs. Some of them control their own destiny. Many do not. And I'm not going to get into all of those here. Uh, I'll post, I'll publish the list in discord uh, in the open NFL channel for anybody that wants it uh, to go over there and take a look at that. So we want to focus on players. I, I did want to focus on one thing first. So like, the rushing quarterbacks are all priced. Any quarterback that has basically any rushing upside and is starting is priced at 7K and above uh, because they give you such a massive advantage on the field. Now, I know Aaron Rodgers isn't really a rushing quarterback. Tom Brady, definitely not a rushing quarterback. But 
they do throw for a lot of touchdowns. Rodgers with 44 in the season, Brady with 36 in the season. But all these guys give you a higher floor. We're going to look for a cheaper quarterback for this slate. And if you want to pay up for them because there's enough value out there by Sunday, go for it, right? Uh, you've got... Where'd they go? You have Kyler Murray in a must-win situation this week for Arizona. They control their own destiny. Uh, and you get a lot of rushing upside out of him and rushing floor. And they're playing the Rams, who have been tough against... Um, opposing wide receivers, but Nook Hopkins has owned Jalen Ramsey in his career. He's Ramsey has said as much like he's the toughest guard in the league. Uh, Deshaun Watson piles up points and against Tennessee was a pass funnel. Uh, if you wanted to go with him as the value opens up, that's just fine with me. Again, we will, we've been getting wide receiver value every single week of the season. We should be getting more running back value for this week. Uh, but I'm going to plug in a cheaper quarterback for the sake of this video. And looking down at the players that are 6,500 and below, starting with Ben Roethlisberger against Cleveland, uh, has thrown a ton this year. Not really 30-plus point upside, but 33 touchdowns on the season. I do like his pass game options here. Any game that uh, we've seen Deontay Johnson start and finish, he's had double-digit targets in all except one. Uh, we know how good Chase Claypool is, even though the volume kind of yo yo same with Washington, same with Juju Smith-Schuster. Just a lot of weapons for him to pass to, uh, and you don't need to stack in cash games. That's more of a tournament play. So if you wanted to go with Ben Roethlisberger, I'm fine with that. Under 6K, uh, Trubisky has kind of yo-yoed for us since being reinstalled as the quarterback. 24 points basically per game in even weeks. 14 points basically per game in odd weeks. Week 17 is an odd week, so the metrics say that we should not play Mitch Trubisky in an odd week game. There you have it. Hashtag analysis right there. Andy Dalton coming off of a really big week, but we trust that Andy Dalton's going to have 30 fantasy points when basically he's lived in the 15 to 20 point range uh, every game this season. The Giants are a, a solid matchup, right? Like not anything that we want to just throw anything at the wall, but like if, if you think that those wide receivers are going to get off against that Giants defense, go for it. For me, in terms of first look, giving me a good High floor quarterback, but not really a 30 to 35 point per game guy against a defense that is really, really bad in Detroit and looks like they've quit on the season. Uh, Kirk Cousins with the weapons that he has for both cash or tournaments, right? With Jefferson and Thielen and Dalvin Cook doing Dalvin Cook things. And he is also involved in the pass game. Irv Smith really coming on the last three, four weeks as well. 75% of the targets go to those four very talented individuals uh, and for 6,300, I think that Kirk Cousins is probably four, 500 underpriced. So I'm going to plug Kirk Cousins in here and we're going to move on to running back. You already know the cover boy. First of all, every single great running back seems to be in a ridiculous matchup and all have something to play for. So Alvin Kamara coming off of a 47 touchdown output game uh, in week 16 against Minnesota now gets Carolina. Uh, awesome. Derrick Henry. Going up against Houston, another team that we've streamed basically everything about uh, against coming off of a bad game against Green Bay. Remember we talked about this with Derrick Henry? Does not catch any balls, and it's very possible that he does not get a touchdown in a game or break the 100-yard bonus. So the difference between the floor and ceiling is never greater than anybody uh, for any running back other than Derrick Henry, but this is a, a situation where they've got to win this game. Um, and they're playing against Houston, who's bad. And Watt went on a press conference and basically just tongue lashed every single player on that defense saying, just you either play hard or you work right. He's basically saying that their, their entire defense is unprofessional with the way that they've gotten thrashed this season. So they're either going to re respond to that and maybe have some great breakout game that exceeds their talent level and scheme right now, or they're still going to be the Houston Texans in week 17. And Derrick Henry's going to touch the ball 25 times, uh, and rumble for over 100 yards and probably at least one touchdown. So I think that he's got a higher floor this week uh, than other weeks. Also, Dalvin Cook, who I mentioned, I'm probably not going to play him in a cash game lineup if I have Kirk Cousins and Dalvin Cook, unless they're both massively underpriced, which at 9,200, Dalvin Cook is not. And I understand the trepidation if you don't want Dalvin or, or Derrick Henry at 9,400 because of the low floor that he has. I get it. That's fine. Uh, you'd rather go with Kamara or Cook because of their past game involvement, plus their matchup. Fine with either way. It's week 17. Do whatever you want. For the sake of this video, this is where I'm going. We also have David Montgomery going against Green Bay, who he tore up in week 12 for, on, for 28 points on 11 carries. Has anybody been better on the run into the end of the season than David Montgomery here? 
I know that Green Bay's got a lot to play for, but Chicago is a tough defense, and they do want to establish it, and this is an odd week, so we know that Trubisky clearly can't have 25 passing points and take all the touchdowns, so... Um, 7,700, probably too much first for this lineup. Now we've got to get down into the spot uh, where we've got like Nick Chubb. Again, I can't double up on Chubb and Henry in one lineup because again, the outlier week for him where he caught five balls, right? In week 16 when they had no wide receivers. I don't see that really happening. He's basically a one to two target a game guy. Max, uh, they just didn't have anybody to catch the ball. Austin Eckler does have himself a high floor, but very little chance of getting the 100 yard bonuses. He never gets enough volume on the ground to do it and even with his pass catching it's always these really low a dot throws where he'd have to break a really long run 11 catches 85 yards 11 catches 84 yards nine catches 67 yards very low a dot throws uh they don't turn into very many big gainers unless he gets ridiculous blocking and busts off like a 40 or a 60 yard pass which he has not done this year it doesn't mean he can't uh they're just offensively not putting him in a spot to do that so Really high floor, but kind of a muted ceiling for Austin Eckler. But that floor being like 15 realistic possibility of 24-25 is extremely solid. Somebody with a much higher floor and a better history this season of breaking off long runs and in a control their own situation, control their own destiny at home against an overmatched defense that doesn't care. Give me Jonathan Taylor. You look at this run in that he's had. Not quite as big as David Montgomery's was, but two games against Houston, one game at Las Vegas, uh, performed very well against Pittsburgh with two touchdowns and 74 yards on 18 touches. Uh, I'm expecting 20 plus again uh, in terms of touches from Jonathan Taylor. If he gets 20 touches against this Jacksonville defense, he's extremely likely to bust off a long run as well uh, as get those inside the five carries that he's basically taken over, which he should have had early in the year uh, while Frank Reich was jerking around with Naheem Hines in those situations because apparently as Twitter was convinced John Taylor is a bad running back that's I hope hope that's been dispelled at this point we will get a lot of volume and value at running back this week based on players who are sitting and that will open up throughout the week the first one that we've got and it's where I'm going to go with right now I don't trust Sean McVay but when Sean McVay doesn't have any other running backs to play in week 17 only one guy is is active and on the roster. Henderson's going to be out. Aker's going to be out. Malcolm Brown is the only show in town. So in terms of first look, fine. I'll be your Huckleberry once again with a Rams running back in week 17. Nobody left. He's got to get the ball 15 times for 4,300. So let's just plug in a cheapo defense, whatever. Somebody in here, fine, whatever. Great. We'll go to wide receiver. Um, coming off of a massive week last week. Michael Gallup has been quite good and not just last week. Yes, he had an explosion week with two touchdowns and 100 yards, but like 10 targets between those two weeks, 11, 8, 5, 7. He's been getting good enough volume and now squares off against the Giants. This is not intended as a secondary stack, but too cheap is Darius Slayton based on his recent volume and matchup against the Dallas Cowboys defensive backs. At 4,100, we're getting a good floor of volume here, and we get a matchup against a team that has given up more deep passes, more deep completions, more points per completion, uh, more efficiency touchdowns that have been uh, over 25 yards than any other team in the league in the Dallas Cowboys pass defense. Uh, this is definitely a game where at 4,100, I believe that Darius Slayton is too cheap. And yes, there will be other uh, values on the slate. If you take a look at the cheap wide receivers here uh, that are 4K and below, there's going to be a lot of them. Nicole Hardman with everybody else sitting on Kansas City is going to get more volume. LaVisca has seen a, a solid volume the last three weeks as well and got into the end zone this week. Darnell Mooney has been very good for us uh, recently and is only 4,100. The lifeguard took a, a leap off the pier last week. But you know what? Even though we're not going to play the lifeguard, with all the players that are sitting and all the vacuum that it's created, we can play the lifeguard's uncle in Cambrate. 
let's assume that Tampa Bay sits some of their starters, which is clearly a possibility as they really don't have very much to play for here. They're locked in. They've got Gronkowski, who's a little bit older. We can get a lifeguard into our lineup for only 2,900 against Atlanta. It was bad at defending the pass. And if Tom Brady doesn't play in this game uh, and we get Glenn Babbert uh, or whoever else is out there, Cam Brate, if elevated to the tight end one this week in terms of snaps played, routes run, targets per routes run, all those sorts of things, 2,900 seems to be just too cheap. We'll monitor this situation as the week goes on. Maybe they rest Gronk entirely. Maybe they play Gronk one quarter, uh, but it does look like Brake could see an uptick in terms of playing time. Uh, so chat is going off about the Hasselhoff of players at, uh, at tight end. You know what we can do though? We can now pay up. We could pay up for one more wide receiver. We can get Steph Diggs against Miami though. They've been tough. We can get Hopkins. As I mentioned before, uh, we can get Allen Robinson here at 7,700. Uh, Reek probably going to sit, but you know what? I can drop this defense down and just punt defense entirely, right? Not going to do that. Not playing the Texans defense ever again. At least not this year. But Calvin Ridley, in games where we have seen absolutely no Julio Jones, and we're going to have to monitor this situation as the week goes on, but Calvin Ridley has been absolute money, averaging six more fantasy points per game uh, when Julio Jones has not played both this year and last year than games where Julio Jones does play. His targets go up. His yards per route goes up. He takes over more of those deeper downfield throws that Julio Jones usually takes, and Calvin Ridley takes the short to intermediate stuff. Uh, when Julio is active, now Calvin Ridley sees more air yards, uh, and he is talented enough to produce. They're not prayer yards like they are with guys like Denzel Mims or uh, Mike Williams, who is redacted still, but I had to explain it for this, for the purposes of this video. Uh, so Calvin Ridley with the ridiculous volume that he's got, the massive upside that he has, 100 yards in four straight games with 10 targets in three of those four, 18, 29, 35, and 20 fantasy points per game at 8,500 gives us a premium wide receiver to pay for here. If Julio Jones is out and if Julio Jones is in, he's still viable, but I'll probably reshape this lineup as that goes on. So we're going to plug him in there. Punt defense, Kirk Cousins, Henry, Taylor, Gallup, Slayton, Ridley, Brait, uh, Malcolm Brown, not Marquise Brown, uh, and punt defense here for, for this first look. Kind of like it. Hopefully you guys have yourselves a great new year. Be safe. Best of luck on a great 2021 and best of luck in week 17. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.